Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to see a very nice game played back in January of this year at the 2024 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. This is really the type of games that I really love to see at the top level where opening preparation is just extremely deep, sometimes even going as far as 30 or 40 moves ahead. In this game we're going to get a very original position just after a few moves and we're going to get a lot of imbalances and even a rook sacrifice after just 9 moves. So playing as white we have Chinese one master Wei Yi who actually won this tournament and this is in my view the nicest game of the tournament and he's playing against Dutch one master Max Barmerdam. So here white started with the move e4 and after e5 Wei Yi went for bishop to c4 which leads the game to the bishop's opening. This is already not a main move in the position instead of bishop to c4 knight to f3 is a lot more common. And here black replied with knight to f6, which is the most logical continuation just developing and attacking the pawn e4, white defended the pawn with the move d3. And black also played a sideline in this position by going bishop to c5. Here the main ideas for black are knight to c6, developing the knight, or going c6, preparing d5, which is an idea that we'll see in the game. And after bishop to c5, white went knight to c3, preparing an aggressive idea, knight to f3, is a bit more common in this position. But again, we see that both sides are playing creatively and thanks to that, we're going to get a very exciting position very quickly. So here black went c6, planning to go d5. And here white went for f4, putting pressure on the center. And black continued with d5, following his idea of c6. Let's evaluate some alternatives here. In general, taking the knight on g1 with the bishop is not very strong because this bishop is actually quite active even preventing white from casting short if white wants to do that after moving the knight. So taking on g1 generally speaking is not a good idea but other alternative was to take on f4 and this will help white develop the bishop and now white might have ideas to go e5 but in this position black could have tried d5 trying to counter on the center. So this was an alternative but a lot more solid than the idea that black played in the game. So instead here black decided to counter attack and leave the pawn on e5 and black went d5. Attacking the bishop on c4, white took on d5 and the follow up was also another very ambitious move, black went knight to g4. Taking on d5 looks like a reasonable follow up after playing d5. Maybe black didn't want white to play bishop to b5 here because white is giving a check and now there's the idea to take the pawn e5. Having said that, this position is still quite complicated because Black could go knight to c6 and even give that pawn e5 because after f takes e5, Black cannot capture with the knight because the knight is pinned. But Black could continue with bishop to g4 and Black is developing fairly quickly. So this position, even though white is a pawn up, is still quite unclear. But in any case, Black didn't capture back on d5. Black's idea was to go knight to g4. After playing d5, now this bishop is supporting this knight on g4. Black is moving a piece twice in the opening, but the idea is very concrete. Black wants to go knight to f2, forking the queen and the rook. So we already get a very complicated position. Here White simply ignored this idea and went knight to f3. Knight to h3 would have prevented knight to f2. But here the move queen to h4 is actually a bit annoying because first of all white cannot go g3 because black would simply capture the knight. So white has to move the king, for example king to f1. And just for the cost of a pawn, black has very quick development. Black's king on f1 is not sitting very well. Black has many options here, probably the simplest is just to castle and then develop on the queen side. This position looks quite scary for white. So that's why white went knight to f3, simply allowing knight to f2, which black actually didn't play. Black decided to castle in this position. Knight to f2 was an alternative, and the main idea is that after queen to e2, knight takes and queen takes, white is collecting a couple of pawns. And this is an idea that we'll see in the game. This knight on h1 is normally going to be trapped. So after all the complications, white will normally get a knight and two pawns for a rook, Plus white has very nice pieces and very good control of the center. For example here the game could have continued queen to e7, knight to e4, attacks the bishop and covers the f2 square. And after a move like f6, we can get a queen trade. And after bishop to e3, white will either castle long or move the king and then pick up this knight. So here we get 
a very nice imbalance where one will get a knight and two pawns for a rook what has very nice pieces so I would probably prefer white but this position was an alternative to what happened in the game. But instead black played the very interesting short castle and now the idea is to take on f4 and then bring the rook to the e-file. So after queen to e2, even though white is not losing material, black is happy to open the position to attack white's king on e1. That's why here white took on e5 with the pawn, the main idea being to close the e-file, so now rook to e8 is not a very strong move, but on the other hand now black will be able to go knight to f2 and pick up material. So here white went queen to e2 and after knight takes, we get this very crazy position where at first sight black is doing great because black has an extra rook just for two pawns, but first of all these two pawns are central pawns, very nicely placed, and in reality white might try to get this knight on h1 which is quite misplaced. So the main idea is that if white manages to pick up this knight, white will normally even have a better position because white also has very good development. So here white went bishop to g5, developing and attacking the queen, and after queen to a5, d6, creating a pass pawn, which as we'll see is going to be very strong. Black went bishop to g4, there's no way to save the knight by going knight to f2 because after d4, white is attacking the bishop and the knight. So black tried bishop to g4, which is an interesting idea, now the knight is pinned, so d4 is not possible anymore. And here Wei Yi went bishop to e7, attacking the rook, castling long, was also another interesting alternative. Bishop to e7 sets up a trap. The idea is that if the rook moves, now after bishop takes, king takes and knight to g5, white is capturing the bishop on g4. That's why black continued developing by going knight to d7. Here Wei Yi played another very interesting idea, very tactical idea. He's a very sharp player. He went e6 and Varmordam played another very creative move by going bishop to a3. Taking on e6 was not a very good alternative because after bishop takes, we give a check and we attack the bishop. And after bishop takes, queen takes, white is going to collect the knight on d7. So the position is already quite shaky for black, even though black is nominally a rook up. But as we saw, white has a lot of compensations. But black found a way to keep the game going and went bishop to a3, trying to counter attack. White took on f7 giving a check, and after king to h8, here white castle long, the point is that taking the bishop would lose the rook after queen takes, black is forking the king and the rook. So white simply castle long, and here black played another very nice move, queen takes e3, the point is that the b pawn is pinned, so white cannot capture the queen, but white simply captured the bishop, and in this very messy position, black decided to release the tension and went bishop to f 3 Black should have tried to create counterplay by going a5 and b5, but from a practical point of view, I would definitely prefer to play this as white. White's main idea is to go king to b1 and then capture the knight on h1. By the way, white is not rushing with bishop takes f8, even though white would win an exchange there, this bishop on e7 is very strong. So black decided to release the tension and simplify the position by going bishop takes f3, and after pawn takes knight to e5, the idea is that now Black is attacking the pawn f7 and the bishop on c4, but here white simply played king to b1. The main idea is that now, after rook takes, black will not have the move queen to a1. So finally, black is ready to capture the knight on h1, and after queen to d4, rook takes, knight takes, and pawn takes, black managed to simplify the position, even though now black is an exchange up. After queen to b6, king to c1, and rook takes. After 21 moves, black finally captured one of white pawns, but white still has a lot of pawns, 7 pawns against 5. Additionally, this bishop is limiting the development of black's rooks. And last but not least, this d pawn is a very strong pass pawn. So as you can see, this position has a lot of imbalances. And if you want to understand these positions well, you need to improve overall as a chess player. So if you want to know more about how to become a stronger player, I have a free course that will provide you with a full training plan for that. So feel free to check the link in the description. So let's now go back to the rest of the game. The game is amazingly pretty much decided by this very strong d pawn. Here white went rook to d1, preparing to push the pawn further. Here black tried 
giving some material back. White could have taken the rook, but White again is not going to rush with that, even though taking the rook was definitely an option. White simply pushed the pass pawn, and after rook to g8, White simply has a complete domination of the position. Queen to e5, the queen is very nicely centralized. Black went rook a to d8, planning to block the pawn on d7. f4, again White doesn't rush, f5 and f6 is the idea. And after c5, now black finally took one of black's rooks, and here black captured with the queen. If black takes on d8 with the rook after queen to e8, we're gonna get a very quick checkmate. And after queen takes e5, black had enough. White has three extra pawns, plus this very strong pass pawn on d7. So hope that you enjoyed this wild game. I really love analyzing such games where we have a lot of imbalances, because we can learn a lot of different ideas from such games. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.